Hello and welcome to this week's episode, episode 20 of the Universe of Magic podcast. I'm one of your hosts, John, and I'm joined at the table virtually by Alyssa and Jeff. Say hello, you two. Hello, Hello, episode 20. I know, right? This is like, (laughs) we're almost a year into this thing and we've missed some weeks and my dogs decided to bark, which is lovely. They're celebrating. Yes, they're celebrating. This is a milestone. Like they want biscuits like right now. (laughs) <laughs> five, five, five more episodes and we got the silver anniversary woo, woo. yeah yes we will we will we will have to celebrate and i'll have to do some video uh, audio editing after but that's okay <laughs> anyway welcome to the show this is kind of a a, a very special episode because we had to change things on the fly weren't really prepared but we're here anyway <laughs> and welcome so we got some news to discuss before we get into our topic um Disney's just, I was going to do like a new segment and I'm just like, I don't know if I, if I should do it by myself, but I mean, they drop parking fees. What? Yeah. Um, yeah, they, dropped, they dropped some bombs. <laughs> Thank you, Bob Iger. <laughs> yes. 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 We, <laughs> that's what I wanted to do right now. Um, yeah. As I mean, a, Bob as, Iger is just. As a travel concierge specializing in Disney destination, thank you, Bob Iger. That was a mm-hmm. that was a that was a, a an eyesore, in my opinion, for some of the mm-hmm. conversations I had to have with some people. Mm-hmm. I forgot to mention, we are brought to you by MomentsOfMagicTravel dot com. Look at our website, check us out; you'll love us. Anyway, back to the news. So the parking is gonzo. Um, and perfect timing. I had several clients traveling this past weekend, and like one of them was a little worried because they were staying deluxe. It was like one hundred and forty-five dollars for five yeah. nights, and then they were like, "Great, now we're gonna go do whatever dinner it was that they wanted to do," because yeah. they had an extra one hundred twenty-five dollars they didn't have to spend mm-hmm. on parking. Yep. Yeah, so That's, it's it's significant. I mean, for some of the families that are just you know, saving for this big trip. That's, that's a dinner or two or three, depending on how they do it. I mean, that's, or for me, that's just dinner at the Yachtsman. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, it is, it's, that is significant for something that used to be free. Like, and then however many years ago, Mm -hmm. like they put it in place. It's, I know we thank Bob Iger, but I have a feeling it was implemented when he was still CEO before. So, yeah. um, but I think he saw how much more, again, we've been nickel and dimes for everything else. And he was like, you know, of all the things that can go, hopefully, that can go. Yeah, so, hopefully it's just the start of some give backs here over the next, you know, year or two, however long his reign is. Um, mm-hmm. Other big yeah. news, you know, before we get to the, the big, big news, but the other big news is. Uh, Pass holders got a little a little um, leeway with their park reservations, didn't they? Yeah. So what is it? They they don't need one to enter the parks after two, which I feel like is such a huge thing because if you're a pass like if when I lived in Florida and I was a pass holder, I very well may have wanted to go to work and then gone to Magic Kingdom to watch fireworks and do a couple rides. Yeah, they and, they definitely yeah, but with, they definitely wanted some um, flexibility there with the pass holder, which is what being pass holder locally is all about, some flexibility. Um, But guys, we should know, whoever's watching this, it's not in effect yet. They're going to announce that here very soon. Um, I I don't believe it's in effect yet. I I don't think it's happened Mm -hmm. quite yet. And it's not on every day, what they say, most days. So they're probably... Every day except Saturdays at Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Saturdays at Magic Kingdom. And I would imagine they're probably going to have a few blocked out holidays in there coming up for the summer. I don't know. We'll see what they do, but... Still, it's an awesome give me for the pass mm-hmm. holders who just want to be able to, hey, after work, go to Magic Kingdom or go here. They don't have to have park reservations. That's coming soon. Mm. But what's the and two big the, yeah. news? Yes. So my personal favorite fireworks show, uh, Happily Ever After, is coming back. I mean, just for for personal reasons, like when I'm at Magic Kingdom and I'm I'm watching fireworks, I think of my mom. I think I posted before on the on the screen as far as you know, that picture. One of her last trips before she passed was her at at Hollywood Studios, and so like when I'm in the hub and I'm sitting there and the the like the last like notes hit, it's just like chills. It's yeah. just it just invokes emotion. So thank you, and I, and I think Josh tomorrow had a lot to do with that. Yeah, so. mm-hmm. and, I, and I think we yeah. know for a little while it's coming back, but they actually gave us a date. 
They actually gave us a day. So, yes. mm-hmm. Alyssa, August, what's the date? Not, not August. A- April 3rd. April 3rd? Mm-hmm. Yes. April so, 3rd. Not, not far at all. And I feel like, right, was it, that's a couple days after the 50th anniversary officially ends. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I do wonder, of, like, I, are... I guess I'm kind of confused by that day because what? The 50th ends on the 31st, right? March 31st, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Or, is it or is it April 2nd? I don't know. I thought it was the end of March. Mm-hmm. So what are they going to do for a couple mm-hmm. days there? Are they going to have an enchantment just kind of bleed over for a couple of days? Interesting, They're right? going to save the money by, by not <laughs> having fireworks? I don't see that happening. Yeah, I haven't looked at, you know, you're going to make me look at park hours. I wonder if they're going to do no fireworks, but do like a cast preview or something. Yeah, or maybe they'll bring, like, wishes. Maybe they'll bring wishes back for two days. That'd be cool, actually. <laughs> I doubt that, but... I will. I will check my little screen right now. As far as uh, yeah, I'm looking. They haven't hours. released. They haven't released park hours past nope. March 28th. So they're yeah. slick about that. Yeah, the, I bet you that's what they're gonna do. They're probably gonna close slightly early or something. Yeah, like I those made, two days. I definitely made a park reservation for the third, so I t- I will be at that very first showing. And that's then, awesome. And then the very next day, there's something else happening at Magic Kingdom, which. Before we Six spit that years out, later. Yeah, yeah, before we spit <laughs> that out, we'll give we'll give Alyssa the honor of saying what that is, but before we spit it out, this this key event on April fourth is finally opening. And trivia question, it took longer to build this than it did all of Magic Kingdom. Isn't that crazy when you think about it? That's nuts. Alyssa, what is it? Oh, so so after you're done crying your eyes out watching Happily Ever After, you're going to wake up at the crack of dawn the next day and probably hopefully try to get a virtual queue for Tron. Jump on the grid, baby. <laughs> so. I'm curious, Jeff. I'm curious. Being a gentleman of, of quite tall stature, am I going to be able to do this coaster or do they have special like cars for individuals like me? So what John's alluding to is I've actually had the privilege of riding Tron in Shanghai, in 2018, John, I will tell you that there was some people on my tour that were similar in statue or stature mm-hmm. and had no problem getting on. So I don't know if you sat cool. in the test car out front. Um, don't use that test car as, as you know, the end all because that one is not adjustable. And I remember in Shanghai, mm-hmm. some of the things being adjustable from the backrest that pushes on to the feet restraints. Oh. Um you should oh. see me try to fit on flight of passage. It's a feat, literally, yeah. because of my size fourteen feet. <laughs> no, I, I think you'll be. I think you'll be fine. Um, yeah, I, it's an amazing ride. It's fun. You know, I've seen some people online comparing it to Hagrid's over at at Universal. And that was literally going to be my question. The way yeah. that you're seated on it, do you find that it's similar? Sim- similar in a way just because you're riding a bike but the restraints to right. me were very different um the restraints okay. were, were very different in the way that they are the know, restraints kept... more like a flight of passage or yeah they're more like, like that? flight of passage um, per se or they lock the you know the joints in your knee the back of your knees and and such versus like okay. you know hagrids which is really kind of restricting your whole movement in, from the bottom so i yeah, you know, I I thought it was very comfortable. I never felt like get me off this thing because I'm in pain. Um, I mean, I wouldn't have wanted to been on oh. Tron for you know an hour or anything, but for the two and a half, three, four minutes, whatever it was, it was perfectly comfortable, and it's just cool being in that grid, man. You know, and for those that don't know what we mean by grid, you got to go watch the Tron movies before you do this. <laughs> I feel like I need to go back. I haven't seen that the newish movie in years, so I need to go back. Oh man, um, the newest one. Do favorite. you? So I know that we can't really rank the Magic Kingdom version, but we know that it's what a replica of Shanghai. So where compare? Uh, where would you rank Tron versus Guardians? All right, so you know that that's that's a tough question for me because Guardians is my absolute favorite ride at the moment right now, and I'm talking about other theme parks as well. You know. Being a mid-Michigan person here, we go to Cedar Point a lot, which is the coaster capital of the world, and they have some of the best thrill rides ever. And I think Guardians smashes most of the rides at Cedar Point. This from a theming aspect, you know, it's similar to the sense of, like, Aerosmith with the Guardians in your ears. Um, but Tron, 
you know, is really nostalgic for me as a kid because I love the Tron movies growing up and all that. So that's a really tough call. Um, I think mm-hmm. from a thrill ride aspect, Tron's probably going to get it for me a little bit because mm-hmm. it definitely gives you a more thrill factor because you're going out into the night sky and you can see yourself mm-hmm. on the side where you don't really know where you're going a lot of times, which makes it fun on Guardians. But, mm-hmm. you know, so from a thrill perspective, I think Tron is going to be my new one when it hits. But from an all-around theming perspective, I still love Guardians, you know. That's that's I kind know. of, I guess, a politically correct answer there because I love I'm like, <laughs> to get both rides to love but no maybe it's like it's, it is it's trying to compare apples and oranges i yeah. guess like they're, they're similar but they're also different so. i think they're both going to be extremely great additions to to you know um disney world i mean i just love the fact that we have something that's going to be replacing a ride at magic kingdom when splash mountain mm-hmm. here closes in a couple weeks i mean they they, really- they kind of need it i am so mad i'm missing yeah. Yeah, Splash Mountain and the uncomfortableness that is that 18 minute ride for yeah, a guy won't. of six foot ten stature, but that's okay because like that could be, maybe that could, that could be a whole other call right there, just crying over. <laughs> Actually, but... that is an idea for a podcast: is like how to handle like rides when you're, or maybe I'll just do a short on it, like rides that are good for tall people. Um, pretty much none <laughs> of them, but you make it work anyway. Transitioning to our topic tonight, we are going to do kind of. Um, how are we going to frame this, guys? Um, are we? Are we yeah. going to? We're not going to do a draft because drafts happen in April and like. No. Um, <laughs> well, this is this is really about helping people understand the differences in in class, you know, classes of resorts at Disney World. You know, as a, and I'm mm-hmm. sure you guys get it too. But as travel professionals, I'm always trying to show the difference in these different types of resorts for my mm-hmm. Disney family. I want them to understand that. That the value resorts doesn't mean, you know, it's a red roof in. I mean, Disney's value resorts are amazing. And you get a lot, they're a lot of fun, especially for kids. I mean, kids really like the value resorts. But, you know, there's there definitely is a difference in amenities and in room types for these three resorts. So I think it's important that we just do a quick overview of, you know, value to moderate to, 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 to deluxe and deluxe villas. So, so what are we going to do? Are I we going to do like top three, like each category then? That was my thoughts. My thought in, in um, proposing this idea was we were going to talk about all, all the different levels of the resorts, why you would go from value to moderate to deluxe. And then, um, yeah, if we can each pick our top three or our top in each category. Yep. That so, would be perfect. Um, yeah. And um, of course, so- yep. We will have like on the on on the screen when we announce our picks, we'll kind of have pictures, kind of show you the ins and outs of it, because I have nothing else better to do with my time. But that's okay. Um, and honestly, like it's to help you, the the gentle you know customer, plan your trips, and that's why you hire us at Moments of Magic Travel because that's what we do. So, Alyssa, being that you have probably been to Disney World more than all of us. Um, no, maybe. maybe well, not. I mean, and, and <laughs> yeah. So let's start with value. What are your top picks for value? Now, there's some discrepancies among amongst the crew here as far as like value resorts, but we'll we'll work it out because that's what we do as a team. Um, so go ahead and tell us your picks as far as value resorts. So I have stayed at all the value resorts except for All Star Sports. So all the other ones I've had the privilege of saying that, and I've had excellent experiences at all of them. Mm-hmm. That being said, without a doubt, my top is Art of Animation um, because well, lots of reasons. So um, yes, the Little Mermaid rooms are the only standard room. So if you want to stay there and you don't want a big suite, that is your only option. But I guess it's the only downside because it is a little bit of a further walk compared to um, the suites that are a little bit closer. However, I really don't think it's a far walk. So mm-hmm. maybe it's five Florida minutes. Too. Nice so, yeah. So even like it was, it was kind of hot and muggy when we were there, but it really wasn't bad. Um, and the Little Mermaid Room was the most immersive, like immersive and themed hotel room i've ever stayed in so it literally felt like you were under the water it like you walk in and and the little mermaid music is playing like the the tile on the floor is water the tile in the bathroom is like sand like the bathroom um shower it makes you feel like you're in ariel's grotto 
So like the room itself was awesome. Now, yes, the suits are great too. It's just, you're going to be paying a little bit more for them. Uh, but the theming in all the rooms is incredible. The theming across the resort is incredible. We just spent mm-hmm. half the day walking around, going to visit all the characters. My son loved all the cars. Um, and then the rest of that part of the day, we went to the pool, which I think mm-hmm. it has one of the best pools on all the property. Mm-hmm. So, um, especially if you have kids. So it's, I think it's the biggest or the second biggest, like, um, just one single pool. Like I think Stormalon Bay is technically bigger in a way, but it's also, mm-hmm. that also like the lazy river and everything. Um, yeah, I could go on and on about how much I loved art of animation. Like hey, you know, I would go, stay you there. You can go underwater and hear the characters, right? Yes, which I forgot to do. <laughs> so you I insisted those... on swimming in December, right? That was your, that was your goal that you've never been in a Disney pool or something. I've never <laughs> been in a Disney pool in the cold, but it wasn't. It was it was Thanksgiving and it was fine. It was mm-hmm. warmish, so I took it and it was fantastic. I mean, we spent so much time at the splash pad with my son, and he loved mm-hmm. that. And we had the pool, and it just was so good. So we had such a great experience there, but. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I love. I don't mind the All Stars or Pops. I enjoy both, especially if you want to save money. But just for that little bit extra, I'd say it was worth it for Art of Animation. Yeah. So that's and my know, long deal. And, and I know John and I shared the same value resort. I'm gonna let John talk about his favorite, and then I'll take. Well, truth be told, I've only stayed at one value resort, and that's Pop Century, and and it all comes down to this location, location, location. You're mm-hmm. right on the Skyliner line. Really, it's a great resort. I mean, I, I mean, it's right across from Art of Animation, which has an amazing food court. It's a little less expensive than Art of Animation, a little bit more expensive than the All Stars, but then again you're paying for the convenience of staying at the, or for the price net, price of staying at the all-stars being that it's, you know, farther out where yeah. pop century is that middle of the road from the, as far as the value resorts. So there, there you go. So Jeff, go ahead and continue on about, about pop. If you want to add to that or. Well, I was just going to add that, you know, you mentioned the Skyliner, Alyssa's art of animations on the Skyliner too. What a lot of people don't realize is that, Art of Animation and Pop Century are both sharing the same hourglass pond. And the station for the Skyliner is right in the middle of hourglass pond. So you have to, mm-hmm. you know, whether you're staying at either resort, you have that awesome luxury of the Skyliner, which to me really adds a lot of, of selling, you know, point to both Art of Animation and Pop Century. Pop Century is where, you know, me and my family went before the, you know, the growth of our family income was where we basically was able to get into. And there's a lot of nostalgic memories for, for me there. You know, I think Pop Century, Art of Animation, you know, and the All-Stars, all of them really, really, you know, speak to the children, the kids. They're loud. And I don't mean like in volume. I'm talking about loud Disney in your face from the characters to the, to the fun that's, you know, within every resort. Now, transitioning to... What's left for the value resorts, the all-star suite of resorts, there's three of them that are side by side by side. You got sports, you got music, and you got movies. And they do just that. They celebrate what's all-star about those three categories, whether it's, you know, the music of Disney World, Disneyland, you know, Walt Disney Company in general, or the wonderful movies, you know, they're all celebrated at every building. They have you know, huge statues at every building to celebrate that, just like Pop does and Art of Animation. Um, and then there's sports, which obviously is kind of around some of the fun shorts that Disney's done over the years with sports. You know, um, they're great resorts. The The only thing that I'm not real fond of when it comes to the all-star sports is how they share one common bus system. Um, I, I've never been a big fan of, you know, that and just from a perspective, it can be very crowded and hard to get on at peak times in the morning and at night. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they definitely send more buses, but they all stop at each other's resorts versus all having their dedicated buses like Pop and, and Art of Animation does. Um, but I, mm-hmm. I just can't say enough about... pack your patient pants. Yeah, <laughs> you know, definitely. I, I, I have more of my clients who have told me that they said to heck with this and called the either an Uber, Lyft, or a minivan just because they don't want to wait. 
So it's that could be uh, somewhat of an issue at All Stars. So just you know, people watching this know that. But mm -hmm. you know, I can't reiterate enough that whether you're staying at Alyssa's Art of Animation, you know, John's Pop Century, or the All Stars, you know, this is just because this is the lowest class that Disney has in their resorts. You know, from a price perspective, it's not a dive by any means. These resorts mm -hmm. are absolutely gorgeous. To some respects, I like the food courts better at these places than some of the deluxes yes. and, mm -hmm. and and moderates. I think the food court is fun. It's awesome. The store, the food court, the dessert area, it's all right there next to each other. And it just has a lively feel to it. I mean, heck, there's some trips that we're staying at our DVC resort. We pop over to Top Century just to use the food court, you know? Not, they have like secret menus and stuff like that. Like yeah. if, you, if you pay attention to the social media, you know they have secret mm -hmm. menus. Like they had which which all star was it that had like through like the viewfinder you could like you know pick out like a special burger that was humongous. Like yep. where else can you get that but Disney? I mean that's that's kind of the kind of the thing. So and and the the value resorts really lend themselves too to a lot of groups that are coming to Disney World. You know whether it's a soccer team or a, mm -hmm. a cheerleading thing. A lot of the groups like to stay at Pop or Art of Animation or the All Stars because it's an easy way for you know schools or dance companies or whatever to get a, a large amount of rooms at a pretty reasonable price. So I love mm -hmm. the value resorts of Disney. I mean we don't stay at them much anymore because we've become DVC members. Um, and I honestly say I miss that. I really miss that. But just know, people, that, that value resorts does not mean less Disney or cheaper Disney. It's still so much fun for what they're, you know, for what they're built for. And I found, too, that, like, at our stage of life right now, having a little one, like, the, the value resorts work great because we don't need anything super fancy necessarily. We want the fun theming yep. for him. So, yep. and then it's nice because a good majority of these rooms have the Murphy beds now since the renovation. Mm -hmm. And so we can keep that Murphy bed up for a crib instead. Absolutely. And so we have that extra room. And then it's because as, as he gets older and as we have more kids, we're going to need the moderate and deluxe probably. Mm -hmm. We're going to need a little bit more space and, and real beds and everything. So, like, for now, though, this is a great stage. And so you can think of that for yourself. Like, what do I need? What are my priorities right now? Um, and that hopefully makes the, the answer a little easier. Again, why pop and art and animation, again, with kids is better because when you have the Skyliner, yeah. you have to break down your stroller when you get on the bus, but you yep, don't yes. for the Skyliner. So exactly. that That's in and of itself point. is worth whatever extra money I have to spend yeah, for to sure. use that Skyliner. For sure. And I know John's yeah. going to probably ins insert some pictures of what the rooms look like, you know, here. It'd be a good yep. spot to do it yep. right here. But um, the, that's a good point to bring up with the rooms because I think, full disclosure, the value resort rooms are the smallest of the Disney mm -hmm. resorts. They're smaller, but they have done a wonderful job, like Alyssa just said, of being with the times and changing those rooms to where you feel like you have a lot of room. One of the beds pops up into the wall and disappears. And that's a queen-size yes. bed, Alyssa. You know? mm -hmm. So they, they really do a good job of managing the space in there, even though they're a little bit smaller space. Pro tip, though, if you do have just little ones in cribs, we requested a king room at Art of Animation, and they, they approved it. And so our room felt ginormous. Yeah. We had a ton of space. We fit the crib, no problem. Like, it was great, and we loved having the king bed. Yeah, so if you don't need two beds, you can always request it. Great pro tip pro there. Tip. Great pro tip. <laughs> All right, so, let's move on to the second category. Moderates. All right, so I will go for me because yes, yeah, oh, oh. before you do, to me the moderates yep. are Disney's best kept secret, in my opinion. Yes, oh, you know oh, oh. they're, mm -hmm. they're ten to fifteen, maybe twenty percent more in price, which doesn't but seem like a lot so, to me, but there's so much so more in that room. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's actually and where a lot of my families reside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and to supplement this on the Facebook page, we'll we'll do like some pros and cons of each resort, our our picks, and we'll pick one and just go from there. But moderates, oh, where do I begin? Uh, so if we're doing top three, um, Coronado is my jam. Like the the food court in the morning is just so good. The pool is just amazing. The new tower they built is phenomenal. It's just so great. It's just. It's just awesome. I mean, 
I mean, they have literally the best restaurant on top of that tower. And of course, I can't think of <laughs> Toledo. Toledo. Yeah, Toledo. Yes. Which I, I, I'm no shame here. I ate the uh, steak for two. Like, so. <laughs> One of my really good friends works up there at Toledo, and and yep. you guys are ever up there, so I had around. Ron, just a, got amazing it. views too. Like, I mean, come on. It's just like no matter where you stay. I mean, it's a sprawling resort. That's the thing. The moderates at Disney are sprawling. They're not like your tiny, like, international drive resorts. These are big places. Like my next pick, the Port Orleans resorts, Riverside and, and French Quarter. French Quarter is a, a lot smaller than Riverside. But, I mean, mm -hmm. we talked about it last episode. You have Yeehaw Bob. You have all these different, like, entities. You at French Quarter, you have beignets. It's just amazing. The pool is great. I mean, there's nothing really disappointing about a Disney resort. Um, then finally, I think, though, that... Oh, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. Nope, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, I think you bring up the points, though, of, like, well, just how big the resorts are. The, that is my only thing, I guess, I dislike about the moderates is that mm -hmm. I feel, like, I don't know why, but I feel like the, all, like, the values, for whatever reason, there's the hub, and then they kind of, like, spring out. But a lot of these moderates are a gigantic circle like like Port Orleans Riverside is a gigantic circle over like water so is mm -hmm. Coronado so is Caribbean Beach and there's not really a cut through to like get to the other side quicker mm -hmm. so you're kind of stuck with all those except for French Quarter you're stuck with either making a trek up to the front or waiting at your local bus stop but maybe not getting on that bus because it's full so that's like my yeah. only complaint about the moderates. But if you stay like a Grand Destino Tower or French Quarter, those both have their own bus stops, which make it a lot easier. And both are just smaller, I guess, compared to the sprawling mm -hmm. options. I don't know your thoughts on that. No, no, I agree. Like that's the one, the one caveat is like transportation is, and tra Disney does a great job with transportation. Don't, don't confuse things. They do a great job with transportation. <laughs> But, like, again, in the morning when you're trying to get to the park, go there extra early because, you know, those those parents with the kids, they get on, they're, like, you know, all energized, ready to go to the park, and you're just like, I need coffee. You know, it's – so it's kind of like – it's just kind of like that. Um, and then my – trying to think of what my third moderate would be. Well, there's uh, only one left. Well, I mean, <laughs> and I haven't, stayed at, I haven't stayed at Caribbean Beach. So like that that's like and and I think out of all the Disney resorts I've only not stayed at five. So like we're we're up there as far as experience. Now some would argue so. yeah, some some would argue that Caribbean Beach is probably the most popular at the moment. Just because of the 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 head end, the MDF, the main distribution frame for the Skyliner being right there. Mm -hmm. You know, you can jump on and go to a number of different places in a matter of minutes. Um, which again Caribbean Beach is pack your patient's pants. Yeah, yeah, morning, I mean, it's, it's peak time. Yeah, peak time, definitely. Um, my favorite, and actually, there is one more, Alyssa, that we didn't mention that that's considered a moderate. My favorite, you. my favorite is the cabins oh. at Fort Wilderness. The cabins at Fort Wilderness. I, for, I always forget about the cabins okay. for yeah, whatever reason. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yep, it's considered a a moderate accommodation. That is my favorite from the perspective of I'm a big camper. I love to camp. You know, we have a trailer that we haul around Michigan all the time. So I love being in the campground feel and enjoying being around, you know, that, smelling the campfires, hoopy-doo reviews right there, the Circle D Ranch is there if you want to jump on a horse, but you're staying in your own little cabin that sleeps mm -hmm. six people with a full kitchen. So to me, it's my favorite um, moderate accommodation, probably followed by um, Port Orleans Riverside. I actually like Riverside for my stay, but I like the beignets over on the French Quarter side. Um, and then I would say probably uh, it's a toss-up for me between Coronado and Caribbean Beach. Maybe Caribbean Beach right now simply because of the access to the Skyliner. But I agree with John. The Grand Destino Tower and the way they mix that in Coronado and the way it flows still. It's, it's just, just gorgeous. It's, it's, it's cool. it, well, it's, 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 Grand, Grand Destino is where they done the NBA bubble a couple years ago. It's where the, yes. where, it's where the NBA played their COVID season and they couldn't leave. 
their families and all that stuff. I remember reading an article that they ripped out all those tall beds after the, they just threw them out, put regular beds back in. That's crazy to me. But that's, that was the NBA. That's where they lived. Mm. So that's what's crazy. your solution? Alyssa? Alyssa. Yep. What do you got, Alyssa? Um, so I, Coronado was my very, uh, not my very first, my, oh well, yeah, my very first moderate that I stayed at. And so it kind of like holds a special place because I, got to experience that whole resort because it was when I was doing a run Disney race for a charity. And so we got to do a lot of stuff all throughout that resort with the charity. So I think it just has good memories. Granted, I stayed there before they renovated it so and I still had a good time. So um, I'm, I'm kind of excited to like go back one day and, and now do Grand, Grand Disney, you know? So um, I have not stayed at French Quarter or Caribbean Beach. I have visited both of them several times, but I have not actually stayed there. So I enjoyed Riverside, but I called in to make a request that we got a room close to the front. So had I not made that request, I think I would have been a little tired having to like walk all that way up there. But it is a beautiful resort. Like it literally, I feel like you're just transported into New Orleans. So yeah, it, 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 yeah, I just, it reminded me of, be, of being there. So I, I did really enjoy that. The beignets were really good, too. Um, I didn't get a chance to try out the um, boats to Disney Springs, but I think that's a pro over there, too. Just being able to hop on the boat and go over there. Um, it's just a little more convenient than having to navigate the parking garages. So, mm -hmm. And the, um, the, so other, say the other thing that, that I'm going to go back to your Coronado, for fitness enthusiasts like myself, you know, you don't really get into having a gym until you get the deluxe. But Coronado is the only moderate that's got a gym uh, built into it. Pro know, tip. So, yeah, pro <laughs> tip. If you're into, you know, fitness. Just pro tip to, the yeah, just pro tip. You can definitely get your gym 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 on at Coronado Springs. They have a really nice gym there with modern equipment, machines, everything. Mm. That's awesome. So it's like so hard. I feel like every single moderate is just different. They all yeah, have their yeah. amazing features of them, and then they all, they're, yeah, they're just all different. And so I feel like I, the ones that I would probably rank high, I, can, I don't even know if I can fairly rank them higher because I haven't stayed there yet. So, like, I want to say Grand Destino is probably my top, but I haven't stayed there yet. I've stayed at just the regular Coronado. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I can't really give a fair answer to it. I, again, I've, I've never had a bad Disney stay, so I just, I've always enjoyed all I just can't re reiterate enough, though, that the moderates are so valuable in the sense that you get a lot of deluxe amenities in some of these moderates. You start to get to the 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 little bit thicker beds. You no, know, they're they're a little mm -hmm. bit more to them, like the deluxes. They're a little bit more comfortable. And I don't know about you guys, but as I get a little bit older, the bed becomes very, you know, very prominent and important in my stay. Um, at the end of the day. Um, not to say the values are uncomfortable, but they're not quite up to the to the quality, I think, of the, the moderates and definitely the deluxes. Um, but, you know, that, that's a that's that's just really important to me. But I think the moderates, just from a price perspective, they're really similar, very close to some of the values, um, especially at peak times of year. You know, you may see a pop century room for 249 or 250 and you may be able to stay in a moderate for you know 319 or 309 um and get so mm -hmm. much more resort so much more resort from mm -hmm. you know the like you just mentioned Alyssa, the the boats that go to disney springs you got uh the skyliner at caribbean beach you know coronados in a sense has got the new tower there's just a lot of of, of my clients anyways my families they end up at a moderate resort it's, it's just maybe that's the way i sell it you bring up a good point because oftentimes, like, uh, values are excluded from promotions. Um, sometimes pop is included, but a lot of times they don't because they often will sell out anyway. So then, but then they'll make the moderates have the promotion. So you are, you're paying like the same, if not less, or really just close to it for a moderate just to like go up that category. Yeah. So, and there's so many, yeah. so many cool things about the moderates, like you mentioned, John. You know, from the characters you're going to see there, some of the people, the beignets. I mean, it's just a really cool feel, all of them. I mean, Coronado's got that Spanish-Mexican feel, kind of celebrated around mm -hmm. the Disney IPs of Coco and the Three Cavaleros. You know, you got um, you got Princess and the Frog being celebrated over at Port Orleans. 
you know, in those types of rooms. I think I think I had read that they're discontinuing the pirate rooms at, at Caribbean Beach. So I think I those are on their way up. Yeah. They mm-hmm. nixed them. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, and so I wasn't a big, the, I wasn't a big fan because those beds are smaller. They're only full size beds because of the way the ship was set up. So they're gonna get queen beds yeah. now. So, so pr- another reason to use a travel agent from Moments of End to Travel is <laughs> when you get those rates and you're like, Ooh, that's a great deal and you look for the rooms when you try to book yourself, you use us and say, Hey, I really want to stay here and we continuously search for those rates. That's what we do as travel Ooh. agents. So again, Moments of Magic Travel dot com. Um, <laughs> so I think we're done with the moderates, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, All right. I let's good, good definition between the two. Yes. So let's go deluxe, shall we? Um, oh, uh, Jeff, go ahead and lead this one because. Yeah, I'll yeah, I'll be I'm, quick. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I'll be quick with my top three. Um, number one in my heart's Boardwalk. Uh, Boardwalk's got that great feel to it. I love staying right, you know, right there, uh, right, you know, with the uh, two yacht and beach club on the other side. I just love the Boardwalk. That's actually where me and my family own at DVC. So that's got a mm-hmm. obvious reason. That's number one for me. A very close number two would be Wilderness Lodge. Absolutely love, love, love mm-hmm. the Wilderness Lodge, especially being a outdoorsy camping type feel to it. You know, if that's attractive to you, when you walk in that place, it's absolutely amazing. Plus, it's got one of my favorite restaurants of all time, the Spring Canyon, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in the there. And then probably my third favorite, and it's probably not going to be a lot of people's third favorite, but I love it from the feel, the laid back, and the size of the rooms. I love Old Key West. Old Key West mm-hmm. is, is probably my number three in, in my list. I know I didn't mention some of the popular ones like the Grand Floridian or Polynesian or you know, contemporary, but, um, I love Epcot. So that's why I love boardwalk because I can have a few drinks and stumble back to my room, you know, very quickly, easily love the wilderness feel at wilderness lodge. And then I love having that golf course mixed in with old key West and the size of those rooms are unreal for being, you know, like like studios. So those are my three. So one of the first trips that we took going to your old key West story, we did, Five resorts in eight nights, just my wife and I. And I'm making Alyssa's head spin. Just with that look she just gave me. A lot. That's uh, a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. It was a lot. But um, honestly, like, that was like the second to last night of our trip. And we were impressed with how big they were. Like, I yeah. mean, the room is huge. It's just basically a triangle. If you look at like these websites that had the floor plans, it's insane what they come up with. Um, yeah. You know, and it's it's a great resort for the, the value. I mean, if you have a large family, you can basically, like, you know, stay there for an extended period of time and sprawl out. Um, so there's that. And then, um, you know, I just the location. We, talk, we talked about this several times this episode. Just location, location, location. You get the value of Disney Springs. And, again, it's a big resort. It's it's not tiny whatsoever, but it, like if you know, basically to rec- where to request again, use a travel agent. That's what we do. You can basically get a, close to the the main building, and there's so many good dining places there. Um, you know, it, and again, Disney Springs is is no like no small feat to try to navigate around that place, especially around the holidays. So. And, that, and that's, well, one of the attractions of the, oh. that's one of the attractions of the deluxe resorts is that they're all located near key things, which is why people love the deluxes. Mm-hmm. you got Magic Kingdom mm-hmm. right there for some of them. you got Epcot. So I know this is going to go more into it, but the theming, yes. the theming in all these is what is what really separates themselves, I think, from the other resorts. But it comes at a price, right, Alyssa? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I am not DVC for the purpose of I could be happy always staying at Pop or something like that, and my yeah. money is just going to go further to do that. Now I in part I wish I was DVC so that I could always stay deluxe and have all the deluxe benefits. But um, yeah, I I still have my fair share of deluxe resorts to stay at. I will say if I had to do my top three though, two of them I have stayed. One I is my next that I really want to stay at. Um, and it was only after our conference, so I'll, I'll name that. But um, 
even though all the rooms have not been updated yet, Grand Floridian is by far my number one. It was always my number one before I stayed there, and then staying there solidified that. So I feel like I am a princess at heart, and I want to be treated like one, and I want to feel glamorous and all that stuff, and Grand Floridian gives you that feel. And, like, I can't express how just, like, at peace I was sitting under an umbrella at the pool at the Grand Floridian, like, looking out at Bay Lake, and then being able to hop on the monorail not too long later and go to Magic Kingdom. Like, that was, yeah, I just can't. Fun fact, <laughs> and shout out to Leslie. That is her favorite resort. Leslie is the owner of Moments of Magic Travel. Um, well, Leslie she- has great. <laughs> yes, she is spectacular. This is, said, John, this is where we have to you have to insert Leslie's favorite picture of the three people like looking down on people yes. at, at Grand Floridian, and the hoity toity yes. picture. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean I did, I felt like royalty there though. Like that I yeah, and I can't that wait for class. all the rooms it is, to be renovated. Yeah. I I, yeah. I initially thought that like it would be hoity toity, but when you stay there it's great. You have the walking path from the Magic Kingdom when the monorail is back. Um, yeah. you know, so you have that. Um, just so let's say yeah. you did yours, right? I did my one. Okay, <laughs> so, one. Go, carry on. Okay, so my um, second one, I know that I won't get any argument from this on with John, but it's the like yacht and beach club. I feel like you combine them. I've only stayed at beach, I've not stayed at yacht yet, but you can't beat the pool, oh. the slide, you can't beat the on site dining, the walk. Epcot, the walk to Hollywood Studios. I feel like it's just a package deal. The so, Yasmin. <laughs> I'm thinking Beaches and Cream, but <laughs> or Cape May Cafe, or like just so There's many good not things. A bad choice. Like, there isn't. I really think that's the not. thing that it caters to everybody. And then you have the boardwalk right there. You, yes. you can walk there, and then you have all those options. So, um. Yeah, I think uh, I stayed at Beach Club for a bachelorette party and top notch because you go drinking around the world in Epcot and then all you got to do is just walk back to your room. Mm. So 10 out of 10 recommend that. Um, yes. So and then my last one is the one I haven't stayed at and I had really honestly no interest in staying here. Like no big interest, like no super big drive until conference when we got to go actually go into the rooms. And so this last one is the contemporary because I feel like mm-hmm. I was pleasantly surprised by the updated Incredibles rooms. I thought that they were sleek and well done. And it still makes you feel like you're in Disney, but you're also like still in an expensive place. And that yep. theme park view, I have a feeling if I ever can afford it, <laughs> would be worth the price alone too. Like just Which, being able to watch the fireworks from your room. The Disney experts <laughs> will tell you that the contemporary is overrated. It's not. It's, it's, it's no. Cool. I think that was the thing. I was like, well, okay. Like, but then once you see it in person, it's just it the pictures don't do it justice. Like you just have to experience it yourself. I mean, we were up on what the ninth or eleventh floor or something and you could see all the people walking on Main Street in mm. in Magic Kingdom. Like I thought that that was so cool. And again, they have a bunch of on-site dining options. They have the monorail, or you can walk there. So that would be my number three. I mm. it was hard because normally I would say something like Wilderness Lodge, but which I also love. But I just really am excited to maybe stay at the Contemporary soon. Fish. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, okay, now anyway, I'm done. That was my three. Yeah. Well, you you stole you stole my my one with Beach Club, which my wife and I go back and forth over time ta- over over all the time. Like, she'll say it's overrated, but the pool, like, shut the yeah. front door. The pool, the pool is amazing. People actually try to sneak in. They give you wristbands for the privilege of staying there to get in the pool. Um, for me, I love the Polynesian. Um, <laughs> stayed there over our July trip. On July 4th, got a lake view. It was spectacular. We didn't have to go into Magic Kingdom. We sat there. We ate nachos, which I'll insert the picture right here. Mm. And we basically, like, enjoyed the night. It was great. Um, My third? Oh. I am going to have to say the Riviera. Like, it's, it's spectacular. You have, okay, so here's the thing. Again, it comes down to location. The the pain the pain that I find is that 
It's close to Caribbean Beach. So if you go to Hollywood Studios from Riviera, you have to, you're better off walking to the main hub, which is like a 10 minute walk rather than hopping on the Riviera and then basically like getting on waiting in line at Caribbean Beach. So John's pro tip of the day, take the walk in the morning, wake up a little bit and then get in line at Caribbean Beach. So Smart. Yeah, other than that, other than that, you can't go. Here's the thing. You can't go wrong with the Disney resort. There's no bad resort. I mean, yeah, you're 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 saving money by staying on an all star, but you kind of have to sacrifice the location. If you have a rental car, great. Go for it. But again, that's kind of what, you know, you use us again at Moments of Magic Travel to kind of just help you plan. That's what we do. So um, we'll put our social media links in the in the description because i always forget to do it and it's really hard to fit it on a tiny screen um any final thoughts guys no i think you hit it on the head you brought it home good i mean disney resorts are obviously going to give you a lot of amenities that you're not going to get from staying off property from you know early morning hours at all the resorts the deluxe will give you extra magic hours at the end of the night you know maybe someday soon mr Iger will give us back the the night hours at all resorts, the moderate end of uh, value too, like before the pandemic. Um, but there's just, you can't stay anywhere else, in my opinion, other than on property, if you really want the full Disney experience. I mean, that's mm-hmm. why I tell my family, it's, it's being immersed in the magic the whole time. Um, yeah, you, you just can't beat Disney from a uh, on-property perspective. No, and now I just, I just really want to plan my next trip. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta hit all of them. I have, I feel like I'm maybe halfway through. I'm staying at every resort, so yeah. I, I have one coming time. up in 28 days, so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. I, Is it out of am, a, oh, go ahead. I am one resort shy of all of them. Yeah. What's your one? Riviera. No. Ah, okay. I have not stayed at Riviera yet, but I've been at every other Disney resort. Okay. Is that Again, is that on the to-do list for 2023? Um, I, I keep checking every other day because we have a stay coming up here in March for a week. We're at our boardwalk, and I keep checking to see if I can move it to Riviera. But yeah, um, you know, it's very hard to get into at the moment because it's the newest, walk. right? Yeah. Right. It's the newest. Yeah. It's the greatest. Like, um, and I think they're selling contracts for Riviera, so I'm sure it's where a lot of people like. Yeah, they still yeah, are. Yeah, they, we'll, they we'll, have to go. We'll, so. We're down there for a couple months, um, you know, starting early March to probably toward the end of April. So I may try to sneak in there for a night or two just to have the experience of staying there, you know, on the fly yeah. during the middle of the week. Maybe I'll get a night, but that's my one resort I haven't stayed at yet. And I haven't. And coming, I should, coming I should, up. I should take that back. Schedule. I, 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 I haven't pulled a camper yet. I haven't stayed at the actual <laughs> campground with a camper. I've stayed at the That'll be a long haul. Cabin. So I I don't have any plan to fulfill that dream either. <laughs> Too far from Michigan. <laughs> I'll rent one. I'll rent one in Florida. There you go. You're better miles. off renting one. Mark. Uh, Mark. <laughs> so and, and coming up, if if the schedule like falls in line, um, I will be recording from Disney. So this will be great. Um, I, I got a bunch of stuff planned, it'll be great. So, for John, well, me, for Alyssa, for Jeff, I'm John. Stay tuned. <laughs> see you next time. See you guys. Bye, y'all. <laughs> we got to get better at that. Have a great night. <laughs>